What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. I'm your host, Pat Finley. I'm a lead master certified technician at General Parts Group, and I'm a certified special trainer. Our goal is to shine a light on what we believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. We love the work we do, and we're glad you're here listening to this podcast. This episode, we feature David Jones from Casper Service Company. David started off as a door-to-door salesman, worked his way into residential HVAC, commercial, back to residential, and now he's at Casper's, and he's selling PMs. Check it out, and let's know what you guys think. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. I'm your host, Pat Finley, and tonight I have Jason Latimer and David Jones on. But first, let's get into this. The RLS Summer Tool promos are back. For a limited time, you can save $500 on your choice of four different tool and jaw sets used with RLS press fittings. That includes a Klauke 19 kilonewton tool and five jaw set, plus eight jaw sets are compatible with a wide variety of press tools, including Rigid, my favorite, Milwaukee, and many others. For complete details, visit rapidlockingsystem.com forward slash 500, say 500, sorry. With RLS press fittings, you get reliable joints in about 10 seconds with no flame, no fire hazards, no brazing materials, no burn permits, no fire spotters, and no nitrogen purging. Plus, you're getting the most proven HVACR press fittings on the market. The only ones that have been in use since 2015 and have more than 20 million installed fittings in the field. Again, get all the details on the RLS Summer Tool promos at rapidlockingsystem.com forward slash save 500. So, it's great to see Jason back. Um Coming and going. He's a very busy guy, um, and we managed to get him on tonight. And uh, we have his friend and a former co-worker on, David Jones. So welcome to the show, David. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here tonight. I've heard a lot of great things about you, and your story is pretty cool. Uh, we shared a little bit in the promo. I didn't want to give all the secret sauce away. So, you know, here you are. <laughs> so, Jason, how you been, buddy? I've been okay, man. Um, living the dream, still drinking out of a fire hydrant, but um, it's uh, challenging but rewarding. And I'm having, I'm actually having a really good time. Really happy. You enjoy staring at the computer monitor all the time. I don't stare at the computer monitor all the time. I stare at my phone and the computer monitor all the time. <laughs> You're gonna need new glasses here soon. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you have you invested in a nice laptop stand so you're not getting the crooked neck from uh, staring down all day. Oh, I do. At my job, they're about to give a stand-up desk, too, um, if we want them. I think, and, you know, they convert, and I can sit there and get my steps in, compete with my sister on, on Fitbit. <laughs> my wife has a stand-up desk, and she was having some sciatica problems, and it, it felt better to stand up. My brother had some stand-up desks. Uh, he does IT, and they move locations, add some extra ones. and He brought it over, and it, it helps out a lot. She likes it. She'll sit there and, you know, stand up and do her work and do some squats and stuff, so that's pretty cool. That's cool. Nice, nice. So, David, uh, for those that don't know, you work at CSE or Casper Service Company, correct? Yes, sir. Six years now. Six years now. So you've you've uh, you're doing pretty good over there. You want to talk about your role and what you actually do there, and then we'll get into the history of what led you to you know become a part of Casper's. Absolutely. So um, my roles, you know, I, since I started, I've been the account manager there, and kind of really the the first and only one. Well, the first one they had, we had another one that's uh, for, for a little bit, but it didn't really pan out. But um, so that's you know, but I've kind of had to wear a lot of different hats there while I've been there. You know, there's there's been times where uh, I actually managed the PM team for a little while. Uh, had to do some changes there. You know, we we were shuffling up some folks, some different folks' roles in the office. And, uh, you know, I kind of stepped up because I, part of my job is I sell a lot of PM agreements. And with us having a dedicated team, you know, they, they, we don't really farm that out to service techs, which is what a lot of, you know, a lot of companies do. Mm-hmm. And um, just they needed somebody to just to kind of manage them, handle their schedule, give them a little oversight. Not much, but it was, you know, so I got to do that. Got to do some recruiting, you know, that, that fun time of the year when we're too busy for me to go out and uh, get new customers. So the only other option is for me to go out and get new technicians, right? <laughs> I've done that. I've uh, handled some of my own marketing there um, just because we, our business has changed a lot over the years. We've had several different um, different, different business sides of it. You know, for a while we had uh, a, an industrial electrical company. We had food service, to, you know, food design. And some of those didn't really work out, but, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up with the marketing material whenever I've got to be out pounding the pavement every day. And 
I'm kind of one of those people. I don't want to give people too much information. I mean, you give them that, that nice pa fancy pamphlet that's, you know, probably costs five bucks a piece and, you know, let, 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 let's be generous and say 75% of them end up in the trash. <laughs> that, that, that's true. That, that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty expensive. So why not just do something simple on a flyer that just hits the, the highlights, the, the things everybody wants to know. What do you do? Where do you cover? How much? So just trying to highlight some of those things just really concisely. But the big part of my job really is to be is to going out and pursuing new customers, bringing them on board, finding out what their needs are, finding out how they like to, you know, the, the things like how do you like to do, how do you like your calls handle, who's able to call them in, um, what are your not to exceed levels, how do you like to receive your invoices, do you want them, you know, who wants to, so just kind of doing a lot of the background stuff. But all the while, you know, it's when I'm quoting the PMs, I'm actually going out into the field and climbing on the rooftops and just check, getting the lay of the land because I've kind of done this long enough to know that um, if you don't get your eyes on something before you get started, you can really end up in a bad position. And I don't want the guys to kind of go out flying blind with a lot of these things because it's, you know, I, I'm probably approaching this differently than a lot of, a lot of guys in roles similar to mine is that, you know, I, I've, you know, if we're trying to make sure we're hitting hitting the margin on a job, I've you know gone out and been a second you know second guy on a job to help move stuff or help, even if it's just be a go for a flashlight holder. So I've been out there sweating my butt off on the rooftop with the guys. So I I try to be a little aware of you know what they're going through and those those circumstances they're in because you know you guys have a pretty lonely job out there. I mean truly, you're um, all day long you're walking into places where people are already you know high stress environments. Mm -hmm. There, that you know, added stress to that is the fact that you know you've got they've got equipment that's not working, so it's making their job harder. Um, you know, the customers don't make it any easier on you guys. They don't care if your fryer's broken. You know, it's just give me my French fries now. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, I I just try to be aware of those things whenever I'm out there. But you know, so really managing relationships, touch points with customers, making sure everything goes smoothly, and you know, chasing down the fish. Right. That's cool because you know. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, the margins on PMs are next to nothing. You're doing it to try to generate more business and generate some of that other stuff and build that relationship with those customers. And, you know, we I've had several problems where, you know, the filter lists aren't even nowhere near right. You're like, who? where does filter lists come from? I'm like, you, none of these filters are on this side. Or maybe, you know, I have a handful of filters and two of them are right. And it's, just, it's, it's frustrating. So, you sure. know, you actually going out and putting your hands on it, your eyes on it and seeing exactly what it is ensures that it's right and your guys are set up for uh, success in the future. And that's great. And, and really it comes down to just because I've, the way I've kind of dialed these, these PM agreements in is just, we, you know, we, we kind of have a general consensus on how long it takes to do a PM on an ice machine. So, mm -hmm. and you know, I just want to make sure that I'm not, that, that, that I'm accounting for how much time the guys are physically going to have to be on site. And, and, you know, some of the things that, you just don't really think about if your your role is solely in the office because that's mm -hmm. I, and, and you know it's not to not to speak poorly of those guys because they everybody's got a role in an organization but if you don't if you're not actually out there on site you don't think about the things like oh well we're we're P, this this location has all split systems so you know in your mind you're tracking all right so if I was going to do this job I would have to go to my my, my you know, truck get the ladder come in, bring the ladder to where I'm working, then go get my tool bag, bring that in and all the things that I need to do my job, do the work, then, okay, that, that system's done. Now I have to do it all over again by moving all my stuff to relocating it. So it's just being being aware of, of what the job takes and what you, know, what you guys go through when you're out there. And, you know, when's a good time for us to do the ice machine in the lobby? Never. Um, Never. So it's, <laughs> or the drive through so, Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, so, so the guys kind of have a heads up to know that, you know, we've got to get here early on this, you know, find out what time they're getting in there to do prep. So maybe we can do that. So we're not in, not in their way while they're trying to do things and, and get ready for their day, but also try not to be interrupting their sales. Cause I mean, it's really what they're there for is to you know, generate revenue with customers coming in and out. You don't, you, you kind of want to be the invisible people there. You know, you're, you're there working, but you want to be out of the way because, quite truthfully in the restaurants in the busy times, if you're not helping get food out then, or, you know, take an order, then you're just in the way. And um, it's just trying to understand those things. And 
I, you know, I will say, fortunately for me, I spent a lot of time working in restaurants and bars knowing. So I kind of got to see that firsthand being on the end user. Now, it's also funny, too, because, you know, when the ice uh, all clumps up in the top of the band, you know, I was absolutely with that guy who was taking that big metal scoop and just beating the crap out of it, just trying to get him to fall. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, let me kick that cooler door shut. You know, it's, it's all the things that, you, that, you know, you guys say, don't do this. You know, it's, um, you know, guilty as charged all the way through. They make a paddle for a reason. <laughs> yeah, see, and you know that's that, that, that's assuming the places I worked in had those paddles. You know, <laughs> it's so um, yeah, they disappeared or someone's chasing someone around with it. You know, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's restaurant work. You never know what you're going to get in those places for sure. So let me say one of the things uh, uh, David mentioned was that he had multiple hats in his position as a sales manager. He also did recruiting. He also did marketing. And and when I became a PM manager. I, you know, it was funny enough. He was the person I could come to to talk about how should I approach these interviews. He sat next to me during interviews when it, you know, doing things that HR would do and stuff like that, that I would expect someone else to help me with. But he had all this different experience. Um, and it, it was it was just a really cool experience working with him for for as long as I had. That's really cool. I mean, it's just, it says a lot, you know, that he's out there doing that kind of stuff. It's really cool that he's involved yeah. and hands on. I mean, we've all seen the sales guys that, you know, they they phone it in from, you know, the office and, you know, it, they don't know what it is. I mean, I've seen companies where they just, okay, it's a cooler 15 minutes and that's, you know, how much time to spend on the PM. And, you know, that's not always the case, you know, a lot of times in our industry. So not at all. No, it's you can walk in and it's just you never know what really you're going to encounter, especially if you're on these first visits, because those first visits, I mean. We always anticipate that we're going to be there longer because number one, you're learning the lay of the land. And number two, it's, you know, chances are these units have been neglected for some time. So it's, you know, sometimes it takes a little more elbow grease, it takes a little more, a little more effort just to get them to where they're in a good place. And, you know, I, I love to tell customers, Hey, we're going to come out every time or we're going to get this equipment to where it just rolled off, off the assembly line in the factory. But, you know, time constraints, budget constraints, that really doesn't happen. So it's just trying to get them in a place where everything's going to be operational. They're going to be pretty good because, you know, it, you just have to understand that if we're, we're going in and say, hey, we'll do all this equipment, you know, get it all sparkly, shiny, like brand new. You know, if you're doing that at you know, time and material or a lower margin, you know, you're, you're either going to lose money or it's going to be more, you're going to price yourself out of the market. Yeah, I've had the customers where they'll get new pieces. I'm like, oh, we don't want those PM. They're brand new. They're fine. I'm like, no, that's the perfect time to start. Don't wait Absolutely. until they, don't wait until they're full of grease or anything else and expect you know think we're going to be able to clean it and keep it up and running. I'm like, get ahead of it up front. Don't don't shut the PM off because you got new equipment. That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, they think they bought some time and it's that's not how it it's works. not that. No, no. it's see, I I always try to simplify and equate it to like you know, it's like your oil changes in your car. Just because you get oil changes doesn't mean your brakes aren't you know aren't going to need to be replaced. Doesn't mean you're not going to need a new head gasket. You know, there's a lot of different things that go on that are just kind of um, you have to keep up with. And a PM isn't a cure all. It's just to keep everything running as efficiently as possible for as long as possible. And you know, funny enough, what you said about the um, people getting a new piece of equipment, they want to pause the PM on that. We have a customer. It's a pretty large customer, and they. Um, you know, they have, they have big stores, a lot of equipment, but they don't do PMs on their small refrigeration, like the reach-ins and reach-in coolers and freezers. And just because their mentality is, is they're only going to spend so much money and they're just going to replace it. So they treat them pretty disposable. But we we started to do something with them um, recently, you know, not too far back, maybe about a year ago. They opened a brand new store and we were like, well, let us try this out, you know, see how it works. You know, we, we got this brand new store, all the equipment's brand new. Let's let's you know we're not going to charge anything just because we want to see how this if we notice a difference for you guys so, you know we're gonna yeah so we so we started the, the pilot program just to see try see see what would happen if we did the um, the PMs on the brand new store and then we took one other location that was kind of a high volume store and started doing the PMs on the older equipment just to see if they could see a noticeable difference that way we have a test and a control mm -hmm. so if they have fewer breakdowns if it's something that they should really be investing in and you know. So far, we've seen some pretty positive results at the store that's brand new. You know, it's been less breakdowns at both stores, but it's um, it just kind of gives them a little different perspective on that, so that they can 
really, really that's all we want to do is, is, is arm the, the, the customers with as much information as possible so they can make the best educated decision they can because we surely can't spend the money for them. But if, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if we recommend something and you kind of declined it, then if it breaks down, you know, again, or it gets worse, then I, we, you know, it kind of gives us an out because we've, we've done everything we can to try to lead you down the right path. But, you know, you can't make, you, you can't make people follow you if you're, if they're, if they're not willing to. So <laughs> that's cool. So David, I wanted to ask a question real quick. I know we started at Casper's, but I wanted to, this isn't your first blue collar stint. I wanted to go no. back. I wanted to kind of go back to when you got in. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Go back to the early days. You already, but... yeah, let, yeah. Maybe we can go back all the way to bartending. Oh, you college. I mean, it's your, it's your show, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, so 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 the funny thing about it is, is you know, I was actually going to school to uh, to be a physician's assistant. So, and you know, I was bartending. You know, living the life. You know, having having my good times, and you know, being careless. I mean, it's a that's I think that's just kind of the thing for the youth and I made a lot of bad decisions and you know one of them was is you know I got arrested for drinking and driving and you know it's um you know it, ironically I sold the most Jägermeister in my bar so they gave so my my prize was a free bottle of Jägermeister and I decided to take it to a kegger okay. and um you know it, it, it was kind of, you know, it, it was probably the, one of the most fortunate situations I could have been in because the accident I was in, you know, like nobody got hurt. The only property damage was my own. And it was a wake up call because truly, you know, I, I'd taken a lot of risks and, you know, really shouldn't have. But, you know, it, it made me aware that, you know, it could have ended so much worse. And it really is one of those things that's, that's really carried through with me. You know, I've been a big advocate. You know, when, when, when Uber and Lyft first started, I was the greatest thing ever i don't have to get into an old cop car that smells like urine and vomit <laughs> <laughs> an old crown vic that's you know been, been ragged out and you know it's and, and i can tell you i've had some crazy rides in cabs it's uh between them street racing and pulling gun pulling a gun on me um and i even had a guy one night i got in the cab and he had a budweiser in his uh in, a, in his cup holder i'm like are you drinking a beer and he was like yeah you want one I was like, well, sure, if you drink one, I might as well too. So he just grabbed, reached into his little cooler in the front seat and grabbed me one out. Man, this is, this is not right, you know, but it's, um, you know, it's like people are relying on you to get a safe ride home and here you are getting hammered while you're doing it. It's, um, this is a Kentucky thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, Kentucky, Indiana, it could be any of them at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, so I kind of was in a weird spot. So I was going to school, found out that, you know, that because of my DUI conviction that, Regardless of what I've done, whatever my grades were, I wouldn't have been able, you know, I, I, you know, there's a strong chance I could have never gotten my license to be able to practice. So, you know, I was, you know, living the tough life of being on a riverfront bar and, you know, slinging drinks. And I happened to have my mentor who was a regular, he was in town working on a project and, you know, I didn't know him at the time, but, um, you know, we were just talking and he, uh, he was telling me how his, uh, his son was making like a grand a week doing door-to-door -door sales for cable and um you know that was so you know I, my life was in flux i didn't know what i was supposed to do at that point because the thing that i you know invested time and money in it really wasn't a realistic option for me anymore and it was i was really struggling for my identity you know in a lot of ways because i'm like you know what do i do at this point so that was you know meeting meeting this this gentleman you know he was um it was really kind of a funny situation because he's a really abrasive, rough and gruff guy. Uh, Jason's gotten to meet him. You know, he's, he's quite the character. He's mellow now in his old age, but you know, it really put, he pushed me. I mean, there was a lot of good advice he gave me, you know, he's like, look, you know, you got problems. Best thing you can do is go work. He's like, you know, cause if you're having trouble sleeping, I promise you, if you, if, if one job's not cutting it, get two. And by the time you get home and lay your head down, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to be, you're not going to have to worry about being able to fall asleep. You're just going to fall right away. And most of the time with, you know, any of the problems you have, if you're working two jobs, you're going to have a little more money to throw at them. It may not solve the problem, but it sure makes them a little easier if you have some extra money to throw at them. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it was just some of the, the values that he kind of instilled with me. You know, his, his big, he had two rules for working for him. It was do what you say you're going to do and don't lie. It. It's like something, you know, you want to take the day off and it's not on my business. Just tell me it's not my business, but don't commit to something that you're going to do and, and inflate and not, not, not actually follow through. So it was really, a, and it wasn't things that I didn't learn and, and values in my home, but it just resonated more 
at that point in my life, you know, and it, it, it was fun for a while being the traveling sales guy doing door to door sales. But, you know, it kind of, it really taught me a lot because um, this is, this is one of the things that I always find is hilarious, but uh, a successful day was a 95% failure rate. Like a highly successful day was 95% failure. So our goal was to knock on a hundred doors a day. And if five people said, yes, you were having a great day. It's, so, it's, it's, it's a lot of rejection, you know, it, man. <laughs> it is. And that, that was, that was a weird thing to be able to overcome because you have to realize it's not personal and you just have to be able to shake it off. And because it, it really isn't, I mean, I, I can tell you now, I'm a little kind to people who come knock on my door, but you know, it's, um, I don't really want to be, I mean, it's like, Oh, it's, you know, <laughs> you bother me in my house. What are you doing? I don't care about your solar panels. You know, <laughs> it's like what, what, whatever it is that they're trying to pedal, you know, but I, but I get it because it's a hustle, you know, it's it, again, you're out here sweating your butt off, you know, walking through neighborhoods, getting chased by dogs, you know, whatever the situation is. And it's, um, it was challenging, you know, and it, I bring it up just because of my mentor there, because he's always, you know, from that point forward, you know, he's played a role in my life. We're going, I'm going on 20 years of knowing this guy. And his wife was phenomenal. Whenever we had to go on projects out of town, she was kind of like our, uh, you know, our house mother. She was always taking care of us and, you know, but it, so it was really, it was a really eye opening experience for me because it gave me the opportunity to travel and, and gave me some, some valid lessons. So flash forward, got tired of doing all the, uh, the travel because I was just tired of, you know, living out of a suitcase, paying for an apartment in Indianapolis that I never got to see. Hey, and, you know, hey, I lived in Greenwood for a hot minute. Nice, nice. So, um, but, um, you know, so it was, you know, I ended up moving back to Kentucky. I'm like, you know, I need just want to go do this and, you know, kind of fell back in the same pattern of working in bars and restaurants. And the opportunity came up for me to get hired as a temp as a CSR for a local AC company. And they were, they were a big dog in the game there because, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to be a part of them is because they did, they really gave, they, they made an effort to give back to the community. And that was important to me. You know, they, um, in the winter time, they did the gift of heat. So they would have all kinds of nominees of people who, who didn't have a furnace or didn't have a heat pump. And, you know, they would select, you know, they would select people. They're like, Oh, we always have, we have one winner. And, they would say one winner, it ends up being like five or 10. And they'd come out and do the install for these guys. And same thing in the summer for 4th of July, they would do it for veterans. So they would provide air conditioning to, to different veterans. So it was just, it meant a lot to me that they were giving back, that they were, you know, taking care of the people that were, that were you know, keeping their lights on. So they're, they're serving their community. So that, again, that was important. So, but it was very different being, you know, nearly 30 years old and taking an entry level job as a customer service rep. And it was, it was fun because I got to learn a lot of things. I got to cut my teeth selling service agreements. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I've always been a big fan of being able to control my own income based off my efforts. And so this was just an extra opportunity. You know, I think I made like 10 or $15 for every agreement I sold. I mean, I was, you know, consistently racking up dozens of them a month because I wanted all that extra money I could get because by the way, I was, while I was doing my nine to five, I was still doing my Thursday through Saturday in the bars, you know, because it was just, you know, again, following my boss's rules, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd recognize at that point in my life that, you know, as a, as a single man, if you do not have something to occupy your time, you will find ways to occupy it. And most of the time it's not good. It's not positive thing. It's you know, it's like, no, it's, 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 and you, you kind of, you know, at least for me, I kind of had that stunted, you know, that Peter Pan syndrome while I was stunted growth. You know, I didn't have a wife, didn't have a kids, kind of floated around. You know, I lived downtown. My my rent was dirt cheap. And, you know, it just, it made sense for me. But I just kept busy because it was, you know, again, kept me out of trouble. Being in the bar on the weekend working, I got to leave at the end of the night. And I had money in my pocket instead of no money in my pocket. You know, it was just a different experience, but you know, I was working 70 hours a week. So when I hear about technicians working 60 and 70 hours a week, I know what that's like. I don't know what it's like to do it in the conditions that you guys do, but you know, it, it's, I understand that, you know, it's, it wears you down and, you know, it, it takes a lot out of you. And, you know, one of the big things that, that resonated with me there too was, you know, in the summertime, we weren't allowed to send guys and, you know, doing residential, you had air handlers in the attic, right? We weren't allowed to send guys in the in the attic to any attic call after like one o'clock. 
uh, just to protect those guys because, you know, it, it was basically like an oven in there because there's no airflow. It's just sun baking down on that roof all day long. And we had to do everything we could to protect the guys because, that's it's, you know, it, it, that's, it that's happened, really good. Though. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had old guys. It's like I was scared to death that something's going to happen to them and they were crawling into a crawl space because you'd hear horror stories about guys getting into fights with raccoons and, you know, possums and everything else down there. And it's like, you know, uh, you, you just don't, you just don't, you don't want those guys to have to go through that. But, you know, from there, I kind of moved into helping out with dispatching. So that gave me a little bit of better idea of, you know, how long it takes to do these jobs. And it was funny because, you know, in the beginning, the, the guys would always try to, you know, give me a hard time telling me that they were changing out the flux capacitor, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, bro. Okay. Uh, you're not going to get me there. A good try. Did it get you the um, first time though? No, no, not at, all, <laughs> not at all. Not like the bacon stretcher did when I was working in restaurants. Uh, that's kind of a running joke to, they always say, hey, will you run down the street and get the bacon stretcher from our neighbor? And you go down there like, oh, well, we actually gave it to the other guy down the way. You have to go in. The thing is, there's no such thing as a bacon stretcher. Um, <laughs> so like a left-handed hammer. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, cool. You know, so I kind of moved on from there and, and really just it was learning more about the industry. And again, we, we were just doing residential service at that point. We did a little commercial that was a whole different ball game. It was kind of like there were these own guys that did that and they were kind of the, you know, kind of the cowboys because they, you know, they build time and material instead of this flat rate pricing. So it was um, just different. And, you know, I moved on from there to a couple different opportunities. I, 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 my career really wasn't advancing to where I wanted it to. I was trying to get into sales there doing, being the comfort advisor. And, you know, I had some hurt feelings because I didn't get that opportunity. So I ended up leaving and going to another company. Um, in retrospect, I wasn't ready for that, you know, and, and I don't know that I would have wanted that. Um, residential service is a whole different animal than doing commercial. And, you know, I can go into the, the ins and outs of that, but I just, it, it's just, you know, it, it's easier for me to build a corporation than it is a person because, you know, corporations, you know, in theory, they have a lot bigger bank accounts than a person. And uh, when somebody's in need or, you know, you kind of get into a position where maybe you're, you're going to do things that aren't really as ethical as you'd want to do. You know, we had a tech that was telling everybody, because we had some technicians there that, and this is, again, this is an eye-opening thing to me. We had technicians that didn't graduate high school that were clearing six figures in 2009, you know, and because they were selling techs and they were senior techs. It's good and money back then. Yeah, it's good money now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, it's, um, you know, but, but, but this is, you know, th these, one of the guys got busted because he was telling people they had cracked heat exchangers and we didn't replace cracked heat exchangers because it was too labor intensive, right? easier to sell in a furnace uh, yeah. so residential it, gets it, a bad name man. it does it does it's, and you yeah. know it's there, there's a lot of bad actors out there though i mean in, in all trades really and yeah uh, it just the, seems like the residential guys it seems like they pay the guys less and they kind of like dangle that carrot of the money with the the sales side of spiff, it and they it, call it a spiff it, i think yeah yeah it's performance yeah. based pay so it, it, it creates it creates bad habits like that, and those guys get relying on that, and they realize there's tips and tricks, and there's things they can do that you know just mislead customers. And um, yeah. I think a lot of you know residential guys have a bad because of it. And not all of them are doing it. I mean, there's a lot of great guys no. that you know go and fix the things they need to fix. But it's, it seems like some of these big giant companies that are just so sales driven just do that. It seems like. Yeah, I think there's really an ethical fine line there. You know, it's it's I I don't, you know. Not to knock it, but, you know, it's like some of these IAQ mm -hmm. products that they're, that they're pushing, you know, and it's like, great, I can get a UV bulb, but it's already, you know, a after one year, it's already lost so much efficiency. So, and then by the time I have to go buy a new one, you know, it's another, what, two, three hundred dollars just for the bulb. So there's just some of these things that I just feel like are a little snake oily to me. And I, you know, I didn't. Another lesson from my, my mentor was, you know. You can do any kind of sales you want to, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and like the person you see. And I didn't want to do anything that was going to, you know, compromise that for me. Because I mean, I, I'm sure there are a heck of a lot more industries that if I didn't have ethics that I could make a lot more money in. But you know, I want to be the person that you know that my family's proud of. You know, and that's uh, I want to be able to hold my head high and feel like I've done less harm than I've done good, or you know, less harm. You know, so it, it, it's. 
it, it, it's just one of those weird things. So, uh, you know, when I jumped ship, I ended up going to another company and it was kind of short lived because we ended up moving to Florida. My wife decided that, you know, my wife who's from South America decided she didn't want to have to deal with any winters anymore in Kentucky, wanted to go someplace <laughs> where it was warm. So, uh, so, so she, she brought me down to, she brought me down to Sarasota, Florida, where I worked for, ended up landing at a industrial, uh, AC company. So they were doing like the, uh, the big boy chillers, the you know, glycol chillers, MRI machines, cooling no. towers, all that stuff. So again, coming from residential world of difference. And it was kind of cool to be able to go out and see how these plants operate and realize that, you know, those guys are operating on a completely different plane than residential service. I mean, <laughs> It's just, you know, I, I want to say, like, one of the customers we had, they um, they got a rebate check for installing this chiller. And it was for a university. I want to say it was like 150 grand from the energy company for them installing this chiller. Ooh, so for a rebate. <laughs> right. So, so if that's the rebate, what are they spending on the whole job? <laughs> How much was man. the chiller job? Exactly. Well, oh, man. Bad. I have no idea, but they had uh, 18 glycol tanks. It was either 18 or 36, and they had a capacity to double it just in case the uni- they were planning for years down the road for the university to grow. So it was just – it was really interesting to kind of learn the dynamics of how that works versus, you know, the old generic reversing valves and TXVs and, you know, gas furnaces and propane furnaces and fuel oil and all this other stuff that, you know, is not really on the same level as that. And it's – um you know, and, and, and hearing how these guys have to go in these cooling towers on the PMs with pressure washers and spray the scale off these cooling towers and, you know, just basically being a giant silo all day, just getting soaked, you know, <laughs> it, with with gross stuff spraying all around you. I mean, it, it was, again, very eye-opening. Um, and then it kind of bounced around, you know, we... Uh, yeah, down Florida, I, that weird stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's just... Yeah, then you get the you get the bugs and everything else, right? Um, but I ended up, you know, that, I short lived at that company. Then I jumped to a, a residential company that was close by because they, the, you know, that was around the time that everything they, they were the, the big industrial company. They had um, they were operating an eighty million dollar a year company. They were doing forty million on their construction side and forty million on their service side. Well. When after the, the the Great Recession, you know, the, it really dried up for them. So they had to consolidate those two sides of the business. And, you know, those first couple of years, they were hitting profit margins that were a, a, a point of a percentage point. So not yeah. even a whole percentage point. So, you know, my yeah. job was uh, eliminated. And so that's why I ended up, went to the residential company. And uh, they right off the bat, they had me because I had the experience. I knew the software. They had me you know, working as a CSR, but helping out with dispatch, doing after hours taking the laptop home and, the, and the, the cell phone home to do after hours dispatching. And, you know, then we, my wife got promoted to Tampa and I was happy because I needed, you know, I needed a bigger city than Sarasota because back in 2013, Sarasota wasn't what it is today. Yeah. You know, right. and, and, mm-hmm. and it, it was just, uh, it was great. It was nice. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but I just need a little more, a little more livelihood. You know, I need a little more excitement. So, Tampa was a nice change of pace. I got to work for a plumbing company when I got here, and that was that was fun for a while. You know, it was again, it was learning more about that side of the business because even though I'd worked for companies that did plumbing as well, because a lot of those residential companies they're running electrical, they're running plumbing, they're running all these different things, just because those, you know, again, learning how that, oh, well, the eight, you know, the AC side of the business supports them. You know, they basically the, the, the busy times of those different seasons, they, they kind of offset. So it keeps the business afloat. So that's why a lot of these companies go that route. And, you know, I ended up, you know, going from there to working for a wholesaler, went to work for RE Michael. So again, got to see a different side of the business. It was, you know, building relationships with these, 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 you know, commercial vendors and residential vendors and kind of getting to flex my, my sales muscles again, you know, and, and having that. And then ended up at another, you know, didn't really, you know, it was, it was a really tough, tough sledding. To be honest, you know, it was because it was a different market, and you know, it, there there was a lot of vendors for them to choose from. And if you're not giving them the, the, the cheapest price, then you know, really not going to be a lot, whole lot of traction there. People are doesn't matter how much people like you. Um, mm-hmm. The bottom line's the bottom line, right? What are you saving them? Um, especially in that world, you know, when you're supplying, you know, materials, mm-hmm. but. Then I ended up moving to a commercial company that did uh, 
it did, you know, commercial AC refrigeration and food service equipment. So it was me learning about that. And the owner of that company will, you know, very smart guy, very smart guy. You know, he really took me under his wing and helped me have a little bit better understanding of the components of refrigeration, you know, and it was eye opening to me to understand that, you know, a residential guy can kind of, you know, get through some refrigeration calls, but you throw them on an ice machine, that's a whole different animal. <laughs> and, 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 and while the thermodynamics of it are, you know, are similar in principle, you know, you're adding a different element to the equation, which is freezing water. So you've got to make sure your water quality is good coming into the machine and, you know, you're changing those filters out and the water temperature factors and, you know, how quickly it's going to be dropping ice and all these different things. So it was just, again, it was just very, very new to me, but it was, I, I was just ready to be a sponge and soak up all that I could. And it was, you know, pretty amazing. You know, I, I, I was very successful there. You know, it's, uh, I, I think at the time our Tampa market was doing about 30% of the business for the company and our uh, Orlando market was doing about 70. And by the time I left the company, uh, I'd gotten it to where it was a, you know, 50, 50 split, maybe even a little more heavier in Tampa so much so that they moved their headquarters from, uh, from, from Orlando over to Tampa. <laughs> so, no. yeah, so it was a lot of fun. It was, it was eye opening. It was learning, but there was, you know, again, there was some things that we just had different philosophies on. It was time for me to move on. And, um, you know, that was when it got weird because I was like, you know, I'm just going to leave the industry, not doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I went and did logistics for a year and that was awful. awful. <laughs> um, I mean, it's cool that, you, that, that they had foosball tables and cornhole boards and, you know, they, they had kegs they tapped on Fridays at three, but the whole business model of it's crazy because there was no, no control over what we're doing. And again, I'm somebody that that my word means a lot to me. And so if you, you know, commit to you know, it was third party logistics, even worse. So it's like, there's nothing we're even doing. We're just an intermediary part. We're, we're not manufacturing anything. We're not doing anything other than just making phone calls and being connected tissue. And the whole business model was, was, you know, keep getting new customers because plan for every one of your customers to fire you. Mm -hmm. Dang. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's brutal. And you, 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 you built a relationship with somebody and committed to something and, you know, and, and the logistics game was brutal. I mean, it was really eye opening to see how things move globally and just across the country. You know, when you, when there's a hurricane, you know, those guys drop everything because that FEMA money pays like four times what regular shipping lanes go for because it's just bigger pockets, right? And, you know, I had guys that got paid for the slain lane, they got paid $5 more and it just didn't show up to pick up. You know, my, my customers there with, you know, pallet on the dock and they never show. They didn't call me, nothing, you know, so they're calling me like, hey, what the heck, ha heck happened to your guy? This is supposed to be out today. I've got commitments I got to make on the other end. <laughs> and, you know, it was, um, it's got to be too much. So I actually interviewed for CSC twice and um, it was before I took the logistics job and they didn't hire me. And I went back a year later after I decided I couldn't do the logistics anymore and they they didn't hire me again. And, <laughs> um, and it's kind of funny because the, the way it worked out, you know, um, the first thing they didn't hire me is because I wasn't this prototypical sales guy that you see that's, you know, really high pressure, you know, flash in the pan, really aggressive, because that's really not my approach to selling to people, you know. And even the second time when they didn't hire me, you know, they were going to, and I was like, well, hey, guys, you know, I, just, I sent a follow-up email. I was like, the size your company is right now is like, you know, I understand you don't have anybody occupying this space, but you really should be because if nothing else, just managing the relationships with your customers. You know, you, you know, a lot of times if, I'm a big advocate for communication. So if somebody's upset, if you're not taking the time to talk to them and ask them, hey, what's going on? What can I do to fix this? I may not be able to give you everything that you're asking for, but I can meet you halfway or I can meet you, you know, a little closer to your side than halfway. And that was that alone, that email got me in the door. And I kind of glossed over an important part here because, <laughs> you know, when I, before I was with this company, before I was doing logistics, I happened to start working with this guy who was fresh out of steak and shake. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, he, he, he was still kind of getting the hang of things. He was good at what he was doing, you know, very competent, very outgoing. You know, he's one of those, one of those technicians that, you know, you really, 
being a server, I, I always classify people as front of the house people or back of the house people coming from hospitality. And, you know, both of those people, you know, both skill sets are infinitely important, but they just have different, different attributes, different things that they're good at. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, and this is my experience, no offense to technicians out there watching or in the world, but a lot of those guys, they kind of like the idea of, you know, hey, I'm working on what I'm doing. Let me turn wrenches. Let me fix this. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But this guy, Jason, you know, he was just, you know, chatty Kathy talking everybody up, you know, and just really out going with the customers. And, and you know, I, for years, I tried to get this guy into doing sales. He's like, I don't know anything about sales. And I was like, you know, don't, you want to know a secret? I don't either. <laughs> it's just about communicating to people and talking to them and finding out what their needs are. And, you know, that kind of spiraled into where I'm at today. You know, it's just being able to have a conversation with people. Maybe I know you can't tell it now, but maybe talk a little less and listen more, you know, ask the, ask the right questions. It's find out what's important to them. Find out what is, what are the things that, what are their goals? Where are you trying to be? And mm -hmm. I kind of treat everybody like that. You know, even when, you know, we were talking to, when I was helping Jason interview with people, it's just trying to get a beat on people and understand the things that are important to them to understand, you know, is this going to even be a good fit? Because, you know, quite frankly, you don't, regardless of what your bosses say, you don't, you, you could, number one, you couldn't handle all the business in your market. Number two, you probably wouldn't want all the business in your market. I mean, there's, there's a lot of customers out there that don't fit your business model and they have different expectations and, you know, you really have to be good about dialing that in and establishing it on the front end to make sure that, you know, if we ever have a question, we can just kind of refer back to A and, and you know, hey, you told me that this was the most important piece of your equipment besides, you know, your walk-in cooler, walk-in freezer. So if you're telling me that, that you know, your convection oven is your most, com you know, most important piece of equipment out of that, then it can't also be your warmer and your fryer. It, it can't be everything because if everything's an emergency, then nothing's an emergency, really. I mean, it's, um, well, so it's, it, it, it just has to be a, kind of the give and take thing and being honest with people. You know, I, I tell them, you know, hey, you call me and tell me that you're reaching coolers down. I know it's inconvenient, but this guy over here has got to walk in down and, you know, I, I, he's got $10,000 worth of product in there that he could be losing. It's his cost, not his sell. Versus you having to walk to the walk-in cooler to, you know, to grab some mayonnaise. You yeah. know? And I, I know it's important and it makes things challenging there, but we have to prioritize it because if you were in the same situation, their situation, you absolutely want us to come out here and take care of this first. So it's just really trying to dial in and making sure that, you know, we all, we all know what we want, what our expectations are, what we can do and what we can't do. Yeah. I so, used to you, my favorite thing about Jason, you know, you just said like he wants to, he, he talks to everybody, he figures out, you know, what that person needs. And, you know, that's really what drew me to Jason, you know, a long time ago, trying to get him on and doing this with me is that he genuinely cares about everybody comes into, comes into contact with. He wants to know yeah. what their problem is. How can he help? How can he be I'm just of nosy? <laughs> <laughs> it works out though. Like, <laughs> you know, he does, he's really good. You know, even if he can't fix it, he's still going to try his best. And he's still going to absolutely and make them feel better. And it's not always about if you can't fix it, but you can make them feel better that they know you're trying and you're going to do your best. It, it goes a lot further than being able to, you know, than to, you know, be a grumpy, sour person and fix it. I mean, it's just it is what it is, man. Well, and I don't even I don't even think it as being grumpy and sour. It's just, you know, this is, you know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe these guys aren't comfortable. Mm -hmm. talking you know and you know let, 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 let's also look at the other side of this maybe this is our 45 and it's only wednesday mm -hmm. and all oh, day yeah. long all day long maybe you're either been you know jumping from a hot rooftop to a walk-in freezer so you know fluctuating your body temperature like crazy or, or, or working Pat. on a fryer while, while, while the kids over there shaking the basket of greasy fries and dumping hot grease on top of you while you're laying under there trying to work on it I mean, it's, it's all that stuff is compounded, you know, and, and me, I know me personally, you know, I worked in, um, I tried factory work in my youth and it was terrible for me. Oh, dude, I could not do it, man. I, I no. on the way home from work every day. I was like, I can't do this. I, I just, I'd lose my mind on the way home. I was like, this is boring. I, I don't know how people do it. I don't get it. I, I couldn't do it because I can't be locked in my head by myself for, for 10 hours. You yeah. know, I'm either leaving the job 
super excited because I'm thinking, you know, I've got all day long and I've been thinking about all this, this great stuff happening in my life or the complete flip side of that, of I'm thinking about everything that's wrong in my life and how bad I suck right now. That's the way so I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they're, I'm either keyed up or depressed and, you know, I need some distraction. I need some interaction. And that's kind of what, you know, that, that's why I excelled in, um, in, in hospitality, you know, that and the chaos, you know, I, I Growing up, my life was a lot of chaos. So chaos, I can navigate. The calm is what screws with me. It's like, what do I do with my hands? You know, it's um, that that's that's why this industry is so awesome because it's, you know, there are so there's you know there's times where you just don't even have a time to look up, and you have to make a decision in the moment. And if it's the wrong decision, or you, you don't really even have time to beat yourself up over it. You just realize, okay, this is a teachable moment. I know some, I know better for next time how to approach this. And I won't, I won't do that thing first. You know, whereas if you give me all the, if you give me time to, to think about a decision, I'm never going to make a decision because I'm like, Oh, well, it could be this, or, you know, it could be that. And I'm never going to get there. But if I have to make a split second decision and then, you know, worry about regret later, I'm good there. Yeah. And if, I, uh, if I second guess anything, I made the wrong decision. Every time I second guess something, it's wrong. <laughs> So. I, I won't say every time, but, it pr but pretty often, you know, and it's um, I, I, and another fun thing about, you know, being in this industry is, you know, I grew up as a kid, you know, working on cars and rebuilding engines with my dad. So it kind of made me handy. And, you know, so I, I can do a lot of things around my house now without having to, you know, without having to pay somebody to do it. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to, uh, to you know, I'm not trying to replace my AC unit by myself. But, you know, if I'm rebuilding a toilet, sure. I just might have to buy the materials to do the job twice because I have to figure out how not to do it <laughs> and, 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 and slow down while I'm watching that YouTube video on how it works. So, you know, it's um, – and, and you kind of just get tips. You know, I, I, Jason can attest to me calling him like, hey, my AC is doing this. What do I got to do? You know, and it's or, – or something like that, you know, and it's – um it's building that network of people that you can help and, and they're, they're willing to go, go the extra mile to help you. Yeah, that's a good point. You got to surround yourself with good people. Um, uh, it sounds like you, you know, you, you've had a lot of good mentors, you know, back in Kentucky and Indiana, starting off there and then just, you know, working your way around. It sounds like you, you know, you surround yourself with good people that generally care about what you're doing and about their customers. So it, it really shows. So Thank I wanted you. to ask something, um, Pat, I don't know if you had questions. <laughs> I just keep no, asking him. I'm no. Good. Okay. So there was, you know, in the, in the interest of time and we have plenty, I just wanted to, there was two things I want to go over, but one I wanted to talk about is that, um, how much money you've raked in for, for companies and, and your, your style here and what you've done. So I want to talk about that. Um, it's been a lot. It, it's, it, I'll be honest, though, it's kind of weird for me to talk about it for on a couple levels because, you know, number one, it just feels a little arrogant when I'm like, oh, well, I've got so much, this many sales and it just feels a little fake. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I also, the way I approach things, you know, I, I love the win. The win yeah. is where is the thing that I chase. It's, you know, it's, it's solving a problem, it's getting something done. Um, but you can't live in that for too long because yeah. all that's temporary. You know, you, you, you can't, a career is not built off what you're, what you've done. That's what you're doing. So, you know, I kind of try to erase that stuff from my mind because if I'm trying to, you know, carry that over with me for five years, you know, that's every business is what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, but it, keep, it keeps me hungry and it keeps me aggressive, but I, you know, I would uh, and, and these are raw numbers. In my current role right now, I'd say I'm I'm close to probably about 30 million in sales in five um, years, just, six years, uh, six years. Yeah, and, and through a pandemic. Um, <laughs> but uh, I saw I sold a lot of plexiglass through a pandemic because we had to shift our business models a bit. But you know, and um, you know, through through the other companies, I would say you know, total through through my sales career, I probably generated in excess of 35 million dollars that I've been you know I could directly take responsibility for, take credit for. That's cool. Um, you know, I've had a lot of PM contracts and multiple PM contracts that, that, you know, just for one brand, one customer that are uh, in excess of, you know, 200,000 quarter of a million dollars. Um, you know, and of course those don't always last, you know, it, it, it's a fickle business, you know, it's, um, 
and, and their business models change. They sell franchises, they sell locations, you know, but one of the things I'm really excited about this year is, you know, being able to, I'm very close to eclipsing a million dollars in annual PM sales. So it's consistent, consistent revenue. That's going to be more than a million dollars a year. Uh, fingers crossed. So, and it, it's, I like that because it's, it's not just a feather in my hat. It's a feather in everybody else's hat. That's working on my team, you know, my PM team manager, you know, whether he stays in this role or moves on to something else, it's something he's going to be able to put on his resume that he was helping manage that much business. You know, my bosses, Hey, they did this under my watch. So, I, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I, I helped get to this place. And, but, you know, the, the cool thing about what I do is, and, and the big thing about the win that really does it for me is like, it's not just about what it does for me. It's, you know, you guys have, you know, being technicians, you, you probably work for companies where it's slow, where mm -hmm. you're sent home days. And, you know, I like to know that, that what I'm doing is actually contributing to help other, you know, my teammates take care of their families, pay their bills, you know, put food on their kids' table, make sure that they have, you know, they're able to provide the best Christmas possible for their families and just being able to give them that security. And, and it's, um, you know, it, it, it just kind of, it, it fulfills me knowing that I can help other people in that way. And, you know, I've, I've gotten lucky and been able to take a couple people under my wing and, you know, it's when I was on the PM team, when I was managing the PM team, you know, we had, had this one young cat who was always asking for a raise. And he was up for one, and he was like, I'm sorry to keep pestering you. I'm sorry to keep pestering you. But look, look, man, nobody's ever going to come up to you and say, hey, I found this big bag of money in the parking lot, and I was just thinking about who could use some. <laughs> and you came to mind, you know. Uh... And, and, and my lesson there was just kind of for him to advocate for himself, you know, and, and, yeah. and always ask. You know, and there's two things that can happen. They're either going to tell you no, or they're going to tell you yes. Now, that no might come with some hard truth, a little, you know, a big slice of humble pie and telling you why you're not going to deserve that. You have to be able to accept that with grace and work on those things. Or if it's somebody that's going to threaten your job over you asking for a raise, you're not in the right place. Oh, yeah. You know, 100%. I, I mean, tr tr truly, it's nobody's going to advocate for you like you will. So, sorry, all the extra comments for, you know, sales numbers. Oh, you're good. good. I so the, re around that. the reason I asked David is because I wish Richard w Rich was on tonight because he's a new business owner and he's doing great. He's been doing this for what a few weeks, a month or two, uh, and he's he's yeah, doing close. he's doing great. And I know there's a lot of companies, despite the fact that it's hot out here, especially in in this, in South in Florida in the yeah. uh, southeast, and you know the money's going to come in regardless automatically. But mm -hmm. you know. A lot of the points that you make and, and the philosophy you have and, and your style, you know, I think any company could could use those those tips and just, you know, different point of view. And I know a lot of companies, they struggle when it comes to sales and customer relationships and and, and uh, account management and whatnot. So that's where I was asking it, you know, it wasn't to uh, pull a bunch of numbers or, you know, I know you're, yeah, you, don't yeah, like, yeah. you don't like flexing like that, but I know that it will help people who are who are established and people that are coming in so i just wanted to share i just wanted you to share that yeah i mean and, and the biggest thing that i can say with that is you know pound the pavement get out there knock on doors be uncomfortable be ready to be told no um be ready to ask questions you know i go in and i acknowledge who i am right off the bat you know i was out doing sales calls all day today you know and i'm walking in the door i'm like hey you're, you know because i was hitting up pizza places today because we're trying to break into that pizza oven market right because you know that's that's an area we haven't done and, and boy are there a lot of pizza places out there to choose from and is that not a recession proof business i mean doesn't Absolutely. matter how broke you are you'll shake the couch loose for some change to go get a pizza right even if it's just <laughs> hot and ready facts um you know, <laughs> well you can feed the whole family for you know i don't know under 20 bucks that's a, that's a shocking thing this this, this day right um but you know it's I walk in the door like, oh, are you here for a pickup? Like, no, I'm actually just, you know, an annoying sales guy coming in to bother the manager today. Is that you? Um, <laughs> and, and, oh, I love it. It's, it's being self-deprecating, but also I'm building that person up because, you know, most time they're not the manager. And maybe I just planted a seed in their head that, hey, this guy thought I was the manager. Maybe I could be the manager. And, and, and the truth is in the way the, the, the fickle reality of, of the restaurant business, because people move, people change, you know, it, the, I, I know, you know, even just in the company that you're with now, you know, they, they, they move managers around constantly. So it's, you know, 
there might be somebody here today that's not there tomorrow. And be because it's just trying to grow those people and see how they handle pressure in different environments. But, you know, you just always want to make sure you're not discounting the person that's in front of you because, you know, while they might be the hostess today, you know, two years from now, they might be running an entire market. And, you know, you don't want them to ever feel like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not here to talk to you. You know, that's, that's kind of the dickish way to approach it and to treat people. <laughs> um, you know, and, and you just, you're, you're, you know, I always heard you catch more, you know, flies with honey than vinegar. So if you're just approaching it, that, you know, and, and the other funny part is, is, you know, if you're telling them that you're there to bother their manager, like, let me go get them for you right now. They, my manager has been on my butt all day long. I want to see somebody else harass them, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, or playing uh candy crush in the office. So let's get them out here. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, I've been out here like getting, getting killed all day. But, you know, so it's just it's just treating people well, but also making a memorable impression. You know, don't be afraid to be silly, mm -hmm. but, you know, also, and, but don't be afraid of a no, because, mm -hmm. you know, most of what your job is, is no's. And you, 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 again, it's not personal, but you get in with some of these people and you just start talking to them, just asking them questions. You know, hey, who are you guys using? You know, do you guys love who you're working with right now? You know, cause, you know, and my favorite is to go on, go into a job, go into a location when they have a. Um, Rich they is, have. I'm sorry, Rich finally made it. He must have just finished whatever he was doing. He got here at the end of the show. <laughs> sorry, you, were your ears burning, no. Rich? <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> but you know, I, I love going there when there's another service company out there because it's it's a coin flip. They either love the guy who's there, man. He's been this is his fifth time out, and he's still ain't getting it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you're all the dice, and it's um, but just you know, again, treat people well and find out what if you if you befriend people at the store level, they're going to tell you what franchise group they are, and you can go into Reference USA and find out detailed information, or go to LinkedIn and dig up you know who who are decision makers in this company because you've already befriended somebody, you've already got an advocate in the store now, and th if you're doing real well. They'll give you their boss's number. Like, oh, how do you just ask them? Hey, how do you, how do I get a hold of that person? We'll give you an email or give you their cell phone number or, and just be bold. And don't be afraid of no's. And, you know, even if people do tell me no, tell me, if they tell me no and get the hell out of here, don't ever come back. That, bu that buys you about three months. I'll be back again. Yeah. You know, you know I'm, I'm, <laughs> you'll remember I'm, I'm, back. No, look, I'm a, I'm a bald middle aged white guy with a beard. Pick me out of a lineup. <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of dudes looking just like me right after you. I'm an average looking dude, man. You don't know. Right. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I'm not missing an ear, so I, you know, it's, I don't have any really distinguishing features that separate me clearly from somebody else. So, yeah, you you said a lot of good things, a lot of things that you know Jason has resonated over the last couple of years with me. You know, it's like treat the dishwasher with the same respect you treat the manager because you never know where they're going to be, man. That dishwasher, yeah. maybe a dishwasher today, five years, he may be running the, you know, the next hot restaurant. You do not know where these people are going to end up. And just treat everybody with respect. And you know, I mean, you weren't always in the position you were in. You you were down no. at that point in time. I mean, maybe that guy, maybe he lost his job. Maybe something happened. You know, maybe he's working a second job as a dishwasher just, just to make some extra money, and make men's meat. And uh, but you never know where that person's gonna end up. So just have some empathy and have some respect for him and just treat him like a normal human being, man. You know, and, and it's just being willing to help people because, you know, I've, I've had, you know, guys that I had great relationships with um, that lost their job for whatever reason, whether it was justly or unjustly, or they just, you know, lost it and couldn't deal with, you know, their leadership anymore. You know, and I've legitimately said, hey, you know, look, I have a big network of people that I'm dealing with. You, I'm happy to put your name out there and see if there's, there's other things, other opportunities available for you. You know, so we can try to, you know, so I can at least help them get land in their next spot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's, it was a Doyle Brunson that said, you know, you can shear a sheep many times, but skin it only once. I want to be in the sheep shearing business. You know, I, I want to take care of people and be able to help them. You know, sure, we're going to make some money in the process. It's business. We're all in business, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I want to build these relationships that are just not going to last me from, you know, I'm not selling cars. I mean, how many times have y'all went back to the same car salesman to buy another car? I don't want to be that way. I want to find out what your needs are. I want to see how we're really going to be able to help you. And 
you know, if, if I'm showing empathy and that I care and that I'm going to go the extra mile for you, if I change jobs, I mean, quite frankly, I brought a lot of people over from my last job to where I'm at now just because they want to work with me because, you know, they they recognize that on the day-to-day -day stuff, they can't rope me in because, you know, they've got folks in, in operations that are handling that. But if they have a problem, I'm the first person they call. I'm the first person they reach out to. That's and cool. You know, I want to be able to help them, even if it's not something we can do. You know, if it's if it's if they've got stores outside of our market that we can't reach, I'm going to be on the phone talking to somebody else I know at another company. Like, hey, man, you know, I got this guy down here in this area, and you know, he can't, we can't get to it, but he really is, you know, struggling for a good vendor. Can I, you know, connect you guys? I don't make a penny off that, but what I get out of that in in, in spades is the fact that you know I've got to help somebody else, and I think that's really what's been, you know realizing that that's what I like to do is being able to help people and build other people up. You know, I, I you know, I, if, if it's a vendor that they can't, that they're having trouble filling, well, I know the people in different trades, you know, let me, let me call my guy over here and see if I can't get you guys linked up and see if he's going to be able to help you out because you can go on Google, but you know, I know this guy, he's a good dude. He's going to do right by you. He's not the cheapest guy out there, but you know, he's going to get the job done. And he's going to do it right. So it's just being able to, again, just being able to connect pe good people and build a net network because, you know, I'm a firm believer in karma. That's going to come back to me. That's going to, you know, it, it's, I, you know, I'm very blessed in my life now and I can't really complain. And, um, you know, is everything roses and sunshine at work every day? Of course not. That's why it's called work. Um, you know, there, there are days that are more challenging than others, but it's just, you know, you have to do what you can't you control the things you can control and just be honest and be upfront with people. Nice. So in everything you've done, what's been the, the your favorite part is, is it the world you're in now, or is there something else, you know, it, all these years that was really stood out more than anything else or. So, so, so if I'm being honest and this might be a little uh, sacrilegious or, you know, the wrong thing to say, but you know, I'm ready for my next challenge at this point, you know, and I, and I love the company I'm at, you know, they've been good to me. They've taken care of me. Could it always be better? Sure. Mm. But, you know, I mean, I think we could all admit to that, right? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I feel that. I think I'm ready for, you know, what I'm looking for now is just to be challenged and to be pushed. I mean, it, there's mm. only so much you can grow when you're comfortable and um, you know, until you're flexing and kind of going outside of your comfort zone. I know Jason's going through that right now. You know, he's, um, uh, you know, going from being a very, you know, somebody who's well respected in the industry, not that you're not respected now, but respected for what your skill set is, to having to try something different and really just being, you know, utilizing the experience you've gained to this point to be able to, you know, hey, this is hard, but, you know, it's kind of fun though, you know, right? <laughs> it's like, this, this is new, this is challenging. And, you know, I'm learning and, you know, seeing you know, just, just, you know, again, just speaking on him directly, you know, that's seeing him kind of come into his own. Cause I remember him talking to him in the early days, you know, he was tough. He's, you know, he's mm -hmm. going to end up looking like me pulling his hair out, but you know, he's, um, he's, uh, he, he's done a good job just trying to, um, you know, just, just, it, it's just being able to have new challenges and new, new obstacles. So it's yeah, navigate. He was a little know, scared first i think man me and uh rich and i were giving him a hard time man he was like man there's a you lot should. of stuff i'm like yeah i told you dude it's going you know, from I, wrenches the type in a totally different world man <laughs> look getting that guy in the office he didn't know how to sit still he uh, <laughs> uh that's the thing you see you see those you see the technicians who make that transition from being in the field to being stuck in a cube or in an office it rarely, it's like, works. It rarely works it's hard it's a hard transition you know, I, it's hard for me to sit in an office all day. You know, it's like, I don't want to be stuck in one spot. I want to go out and talk to people and see some things, you know, and, you know, learn something, meet somebody new. Let me hear your story. But, you know, it's, um, you know, and it's funny because I gave him a hard time because he's been talking about, you know, making this jump for years. And I'm like, okay, are you ready to get calls at, you know, two o'clock in the morning because something crazy's <laughs> popped off? You know, it's like, you're giving up a lot of your personal time Oh, yeah. And he was like, a hundred percent, absolutely sign me up twice. Um, you know, but it's, it, you know, it, as far as my favorite part about doing in this industry is really, it's been able to help people. It's being mm -hmm. able to, to push guys into different places that they didn't really see for themselves or being able to, you know, 
be giving them really the, the the truth. We had a when I was managing the PM team, I had a guy that was you know, and he was you know making garbage money, garbage money, and I was able to get him some good raises in my time overseeing him, and it made me really happy because he had a family to support. Like dude was running Uber Eats when he left from doing PMs just to you know put food on the table, take care of his you know kids. Um, and then whenever he decided, you know, he was really wanting to move over to our install project team, and you know. I had a real long conversation because I want to help this guy grow, you know, and it's, again, mm. that's another thing that, you know, my mentor told me is, you know, one of the most amazing things you can do is help people grow to that next step and not be selfish. And while it does hurt you because you've got somebody, you know, you've got a, a hole to fill, mm -hmm. but you know, you want to see them grow and flourish. You want to see them go to the next level of their, their career and their life. But I sit down with them. I'm like, look, man, I was like, these PM as like, you know, right now you've got it pretty made. It's like, you know, our PM schedule is Monday through Friday. You're never on call. You know, you're never working past four o'clock. I was like, you understand that when you go to this other team, I was like, I, you really should go home and talk to your wife and have a conversation because this is going to be you working overnights, you working out of towns. There's going to be projects where you might not be home for a whole week. And just giving them the right information because a lot of times, I mean, we, we you know, Jason had a guy that was uh, on the PM team that, you know, he, he paid for himself to go to tech school. And when he got out there in the field, he's like, oh, I really don't do well working on my own. <laughs> and that's tough, buddy, because that's what this job is. <laughs> you know, this is a lot, of, I it's a lot of it's a lot of solitude. And he wanted to go to the insult team. I'm like, those I'm not sure that you have thick enough skin yet to go to the insult team because those guys will eat you for breakfast. Uh, <laughs> Sensitive. Yeah, I mean you, you just eat. so it's just being, you know, again, just telling people the truth because there's a lot of things out there that you know it sounds good in theory until the rubber you know meets the road and you know a lot of guys you know go through the time and effort and spend the money to go to school and they realize oh this is hard this isn't easy this sucks you know i'm going home after a 12-hour day and i'm drenched sweat mm -hmm. i didn't need anything and but that's what it is some days and it's not it's not right but it's just it's sometimes it's what the job calls for and you know, and, and again, going, you know, calling back to the, the guys that, you know, didn't go, didn't get, a, didn't finish high, you know, high school. They were making six figures. You know, it's how many other industries, do you know, that, that somebody who has had came from any background can come in and just kill it and make a name for themselves based off their work ethic and their attitude. I didn't finish I high think, school. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it's because we all take different paths to get to where we are now. And, you know, I like to tell myself that I didn't have anybody to help me along the way, you know, just because it makes me feel better about how far I've come, you know, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've all had different challenges and, and people that helped us. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, I try to instill in guys is, you know, there's people that helped you, you know, if they saw you when, when guys are, you know, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, I just want to shake them and be like, you know, the dude who took you under his wing and showed you this trade and, and invested his time and energy that he didn't have to. If he saw you doing this half-assed job that you're doing right now, would you want him to see that? How would you feel? You know, would you would he be proud of what you're doing right now? Or are you proud of what you're doing right now? Mm -hmm. And it's I understand that these days are long and you get you guys get tired and because it's a lot. It, it's it's physically demanding and mentally demanding. You know, and it's um it's not that in the office. We have tough days. You know, but we're we have tough days in the air conditioner in our chairs. With cake, you know? lots of cake, it's, cake. You know, <laughs> my, yeah, right. Cake for the cake the for the office and pizza for the crew. Um, you know, it, it, it was one of my favorite things that I did whenever I was a CSR back. You know, way back when, it's coming in on, on a, a summer morning, and you know you've got this this old lady who calls you, and you know she's like, hey. uh, my air conditioner is making this weird noise and you got your man next door, you know, can he just come over here whenever he's done? And I'm like, well, I can put you on, on the schedule, but you know, we're not going to be able to have anybody there till, you know, for a couple of days, and, you know, you have, have a little old lady that's your grandmother cussing you up and down because he's just right next door, you know, and she thinks she gets to skip the line. It's like, I wish that was the case, but it's not, unfortunately. And you just, if that's, but again, if that's the hardest thing I have to deal with, that's, that's, you know, that's not suffering from heat exhaustion from changing out a compressor on the roof. You know, yeah. that's, the, that's, you know, that those, those are just two totally different things, you know, and I can compartmentalize that and might, I might have a couple of minutes and just do a lap around the building just to kind of cool off. But, you know, 
that's not the same, you know, and it's, um, my perspective is, is everything that we do in the office should be in support, in service of what you guys are doing out there. It's arming you guys with the right information so that you walk into the job looking like a superhero because they're going through something. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we can give you every, every bit of information that you need going into it, say, Hey, you know, so your fryer is not, uh, is overheating and, you know, that, that, that's what I'm here to work on today. Is there, is it, does that sound right? Is there anything else I can help you with? The customer's going to respond to that so much better. Like, man, this guy's dialed in. This guy knows what's up. I feel confident already. Versus, hey, they said something's not working and I'm here. So what is it? That just sounds unprofessional to me. And like we, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 well, it, it's inconsiderate too because we're, we're not charging, you mm -hmm. know, $5 an hour. You know, if, if 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 we're taking the time on the front end to get that information to get make sure that you guys have it walking into the job, or you know, hey, don't throw this grill out because they're going to keep it as a backup, you know, and then you're out there cutting it in half, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's just trying to be, it, it, it's got to be a whole thing here and and make us all work together because it doesn't work if we're not on the same page and. You know, the guys are actually turning wrenches and generating revenue for the company. If we're not doing everything we can to support those people, then what are we really doing? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Pat, I got to ask him. I know we're past the hour mark, <clears throat> but there's no way you're going to flex with all that booze in the background. Yeah, we got to talk about it. Yeah, because there's we, we know we have uh, viewers <laughs> that can appreciate some good whiskey and bourbon and it looks like you got a real okay. collection back there. You might have to pick your phone. I got one or two. Lucky boy, it shows. hold on. I was I wanted it to do this. <laughs> Let's see what you got, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a hodgepodge of everything. And in, in, in my defense, I grew up in Kentucky, so this is like mother's milk to me, right? And I, I, you know, I had my first child two years ago, which another life changing event. And, you know, I can go down a whole other tangent on that. So I don't get to, 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 to spend as much as I used to on this, but, um, you know, I've got a, I've got my, uh, my wild Turkey shelf. I have my maker's mark and, uh, MGP shelf. I have my heaven Hill shelf. Um, and again, just kind of a hodgepodge here. I've got my Michter's and 1792 shelf, my Brown Foreman shelf, which is, you know, all the old Forester and Woodford Reserve. Um, Look at that. He's got a group. That's bad. Uh, yeah. I mean. He's got sophisticated. It, How many pappies you got back up there, dude? <laughs> I, well, so, so, so it depends on, depending on who we're talking to, you know, if you're talking to purists, there's only three pappies. Okay. Um, there's the 15, the 20, and the 23. I only have a 15, but I have a 12 year Van Winkle. Okay. Um, I got a bunch of EHT, EH Taylors, uh, some George T. Staggs, some Eagle Rare 17. You know, my Weller shelf, which is getting thinner than I'd like it to. Um, my other Buffalo Trace shelf, which, you know, has, uh, you know, all, a, a bunch of their different offerings. I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole on my, um, my Four Roses here. I'm hoping you guys can see this stuff right. Oh no, four roses down here, camera. Um, oh, I will tell Picardi you. Though, swill at the bottom. I see. Well, these are my mixers, right? Okay. Um, I have my Brugal Leyenda here, and the bottles backwards. If you guys ever get a chance to go to the Dominican Republic, get as much of this stuff as you can. I don't care if you're not a rum drinker; <laughs> you can only buy it there. Um, out of this world. Nice. I have my. My fun motor oil, thirteenth uh, colony double oaked, and of course, this bad boy. Oh, the double uh, eagle rare. What's that going for? Me... Seven grand right now? Mm -hmm. eh, it depends on. I was in a shop today that was selling one for fourteen. Um, Should have grabbed it for me. I didn't pay anywhere near that. Not fourteen dollars, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I know your. I know your bourbon budget. Uh, <laughs> You got me started, man. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, so I mean, um, you know, I, that one, you know, it's, it'll probably sit on the shelf. I don't know that I'll ever open that one just because it's, it's, it's a, a little crazy. Fund. It's a college fund in that one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I will say, I, I do have a really cool bottle that I'll share with you guys. That's um, uh, so this is the old Forrester birthday bourbon. 
um, I have two of these. I have one that's the second one released ever that my dad gave me. Um, but this one is actually from the year my son was born, ironically enough. So that's cool. I didn't realize. Yeah. So it, it's even baby blue, right? It's got the baby blue ribbon. The, the, right. the cooler part about this is um, this stuff was distilled the year that me and my wife met. It came out of the year, it came out of the barrel the year my son was born. So um, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind oh, of a near and dear bottle for me. Yeah. 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 And then my other favorite bottle that I have that I'll never drink is my, uh, you know, my good old Woodford Reserve. But this one's a little special, again, because my dad gave it to me just because uh, he's a 101st Airborne Vietnam vet. And it has the, um, let me not get the it's glare on here. Yeah, it has the Airborne it. logo on the back. Nice. So it was, you know, it's not anything fancy, but it means a lot to me. So it's, uh, you know, that one's going to stay closed. That's cool. Yeah, I need so... I need to try some E.H. Taylor. My buddy um, that always gives me the Blanton. He loves it. That's that's his go-to is E.H. Taylor. Yeah. You haven't tried that yet? No, I haven't tried it. Um, it's so like Jason good. Flexen. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. You got me onto it. I got some. You know. I'll uh, have something you don't have, Pat. <laughs> we'll, we'll get your address, and I'll send, you a, I'll send you a sample pack. How's that? I need to just go down to Kentucky and go spend some money is what I need to do. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> You, you have to keep in mind that um, that's that's a, a huge tourism for them. So oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody and their brother is going to Kentucky to get bourbon, mm -hmm. and everybody in Kentucky knows what they can sell it for. Uh, so, <laughs> so you're you're going to pay a lot more than what retail is. And I'm you know, I'm a sales guy, right? So I'm not, I'm trying to buy low, sell high. Uh, so, <laughs> so Rich just chimed in and he said, "I'm just here buying my liquor at Costco." Oh, David Dang. buys his liquor at Costco too. <laughs> I got, they, they got some stuff locked, man. I got this bad boy at Sam's Club this year, along <laughs> with a twenty-year-old Pappy Van Winkle. So it's um, yeah, you can't sleep on Costco Pappy and BJ's, right? Right. <laughs> Costco Sam's and BJ's, any of those. Nice. Uh, you usually I get most of my bourbon from from Win Dixie, believe it or not. So I get yeah. this I joined some groups and like there's some Kroger's that like like there's oh, a yeah. lot at the door at Kroger's like when they get it I'm like they were taking pictures I was like there's like a hundred people trying to wait to get in line for I'm like what in the world does this Kroger have that my Kroger doesn't they're giving away <laughs> free puppies yeah just like a Chick Fil A <laughs> yeah lifetime sandwiches chicken sandwiches man the yeah. first yeah the first time I went to Chick Fil A is getting ready to open up and there was a, there was like tents in a parking lot and I was like they were open up like the next day. I had to go there and work on some stuff. You know, they were freaking out. I was like, what's going on? They're like, oh, you've never seen this before? I was like, no. They're like, oh, we give away like free chicken sandwich for like a year. And all these people are just like camping out in the parking lot. It was like a big party. It was a college town. I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's tail tailgating for chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so my question is on that, you know, just because I'm curious now, does it have to be the fried chicken or can you, you know, switch it up with the grilled chicken too? I don't know. I think it was just the standard chicken sandwich, Chick Fil A sandwich. Okay. Yeah, so I could eat one Fair enough. Right now. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> so we're approaching an hour twenty minutes, man. I got to go all night because this dude is wound up, man. He's a he's a knowledge. He's a wealth of knowledge. Um, it's pretty cool. You've been in a lot of different sales positions and you've seen a lot of different angles. And you know, you weren't scared to admit that you know some of these companies out here are just taking advantage of people. You know, just not not really doing the right thing for the customer um you know i'm a firm believer in just take care of your customer they're gonna take care of you and i agree some of these residential companies just get a bad name man and it's unfortunate that they put those guys in those positions you know and those guys just become ingrained to do what they have to do to make that spiff so and, and, and the unfortunate part about that is too is you know it's they they end you know a lot of times they don't last they're just they end up hopping from company to company which is not a bad thing you know i I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you're not, if you're not being moved up the food chain, you know, if you're not being promoted or you're not being paid exceptionally well, you know, you should always test the market and, and um, 100%. just to see what your value is, you know, but it, it's, it, and that's across the board. I don't care what industry you're in, but it's, you know, it, it's, you, you just kind of get this cycle of guys that just jump from place to place and there's no consistency and, you know, they just continue with bad habits instead of somebody just being like, hey, you know, 
it, it's people not caring for them. It's just them, them being what they can produce. And that's even when you're managing people or, or mentoring people, you know, you, you have to, you have to care for them and give them time, even when it's inconvenient, even when it means doing something, you know, that, that mm-hmm. when it's not what you want to do. It, it's, but it's just helping people grow because, you know, you guys know this, you guys know this. I mean, this industry, nobody's jumping in anymore. You know, kids are afraid to work or they don't want to work because they think they can be an influencer or, you know, whatever else, or professional gamer. And, you know, this, this is just such an amazing opportunity because, you know, Luke, Luke, man, I mean, that kid has got it together. He's got the world on a platter. Um, You know, he was your guest a few weeks ago and, you know, young guy out there doing his thing, just absorbing all the knowledge and that he's going to, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I see this guy running a company someday, you know, just because, and there's just a limitless possibilities. And, and, you know, I feel like there's, you know, a lot of people that, you know, they're not, they don't see this as a career opportunity and there's so much you can do in this industry and it, it translates to so many different ways. You know, it, it, it's just, it, it's a shame that we just don't push kids to this and, you know, don't get me wrong. College is, you know, college is a great experience, but you know, it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you, you, you can send you, it, it blows my mind that we can give an eight, we can, you know, allow a, an 18 year old kid to get, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt, but we won't let him, you know, we'll let him get a mortgage. We're not steering him in the direction that, Hey, you know, you can, you, you, you can spend, you know, I don't know, 15 grand on going to trade school. And walk mm-hmm. out the door, you know, easily making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. You Easy. know, which is probably which is probably more money than they've ever seen. It might be more money than their parents make, you know, and it's just giving them an opportunity to do something that, you know, they may have never even thought about. And it's I I I've, it's maddening that we don't push more kids to that. So both of my kids do it. Um both my sons. I uh my oldest son's twenty one years old, he owns a house, he just bought a brand new Bronco. Like <laughs> Good like, job, Dad. Yeah, he, he's he's killing it. He works with me, and then my youngest son, he's uh, he gets his first paycheck from working with me in two days, and he's he's enjoying it so far. So, um, you know, and I told him like, you go to college, you do what you want. I can't, you're not gonna get anything for free. You're gonna have to take loans, you're gonna have to pay it back, and I know you're gonna be a party boy, and you're gonna be in trouble, and you're gonna owe a lot of money for something you can't do anything with. So, yeah. <laughs> No, so, I mean, but this industry is it's it's been a blessing to me, man. I never thought I'd end up here. Um I was, No, me either. I thought it was gonna be an electrician. Um I had I, I was I was the eighteen year old kid that started off being an electrician. I was union uh, and the market kind of fell out, but I was like when I top mm-hmm. that off buying a Corvette, you know, I it, that was just my goal and it never happened. Um thankfully it never happened and I'm where I'm at now and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Um I look back at, you know, being younger, some decisions I made and they probably weren't the best, but you know, it made me what I am and who I am and where I'm at. So I can't really complain. <laughs> no, it defines you. Yeah. I have to say that's real maturity when you say you wanted something so bad, but thank God it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. says a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I tell everybody that, you know, I didn't know anything till I was about 25 and it wasn't much. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, um, Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't in a situation where I was forced to grow up. You know, I didn't have kids early. You know, I, I didn't, you know, I, I kind of, I got lucky because I didn't get in more trouble than I should have, you know, or that I could have yep. and did, didn't get myself in situations. You know, and, and again, it wasn't anything that I did differently or that I didn't do. It was just luck and the grace of God. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, um, you know, so it's, I, I'm a big advocate, you know, the people, people are going to make mistakes and we have to be able to give them the space to overcome that. You know, you can't, you know, we, we, you know, me and Jason work with a guy, you know, he made some dumb decisions and, you know, it, it's, um, it's kind of haunted them, you know, and I, I, I feel bad because he's a solid human being, you know, he's a great father, you know, great person, do anything for you. I mean, but because of some, some, some poor decisions he made, you know, it's kind of held him back for a little longer than it should have. And I, I feel bad for him. I mean, he's still, He's still doing well and still has a great life. And, you know, he's on our industry and he's making good money, but it's, you know, it, it, it kind of sucks because, it, you know, it, it, those four decisions that it just didn't go away, that they were, you know, they've, they've held him up and um, he deserves better than that. And, you know, he certainly has the work ethic for it and the commitment and, and you know, just kind of what it is, unfortunately, but, you know, yeah, it's, I feel like there's a lot of kids out there that don't know what the hell they're doing and, you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and they don't know the direction. And, you know, we just, that was one of the things that I loved about Casper's is, you know, that they, they invested so heavily in the, in their people, you know, they, they, they trained a lot, you know, that's how they began is they, they started training their people up uh -huh. and they, they were taking guys that were in the stores that were making, you know, garbage money, sending them out to manufacturers to get ASA training. They're like, Hey, you know what? You're our new, uh, you're our new Henny Penny Fryer repair guy. And, you know, they just kind of, they, they built on them from that. You know, we have a guy who's running operations now who, that was his story. You know, he, he started in the stores, you know, flipping burgers. And now he's, you know, now he's running operations for, for, you know, multi-million dollar company. And that's, you know, that's awesome. That's, that, that, that's success right there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Jason, you got anything else? Cause we are way <laughs> long. Uh, this is the longest you, episode. <laughs> you get a sales guy talking, and I don't shut up. <laughs> oh, it's great. No, it's been a great. Episode. Episode. I love it, man. We'll yeah, we'll we'll have to have a part Dukes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I just I'm glad that David had an opportunity to come on. I just think that his experience and and his background uh, speaks to a lot of people. Whether you're whether you are a, a technician in front of a customer, talking to a customer and, and being genuinely interested in what their situation is and wanting to help. Or if you're starting a new business like Rich is and a lot of people are and, and how you can grow or you're a, an established business that, you know, might be hitting those those dead spots, you know, where it's not a gimme during the summer. You know, you got to have good people that, you know, that really do care about a taking care of accounts, taking care of the customers and whatnot. And I, that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring David on, you know, and that all, that's all second to the fact that he is a very good friend of mine. Uh, and I've known him for eight years and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have him in my corner. You know, it's one of the few people and I don't have a big circle, but I'll do anything for, and he's, he's always come through for me. And, and I appreciate his work, workmanship, his friendship and his, and his, uh, his family ethics. And he's a solid dude. And I'm glad he had an opportunity to come on. And I'm super grateful that you finally invited me. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, truly, I, I, I haven't watched a lot of episodes, but I definitely caught a lot of, you know, clips here and there and, and, and caught some shows. So I'll, I'll uh, you know, I love what you guys are doing. I'm really, really grateful to, to get this opportunity. And, you know, if there is a part two, just let me know. You know, I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll set it up. We'll have to get that. We'll have to get that scheduled. Um but it's nice to see a salesman actually have a technician's back. You know, a lot of times salesmen, their their only interactions with technicians is like, you screwed this up, you cost me money, you know, we're losing money on this because you didn't do whatever. And it's nice to see that, you know, you really have your guys' back. You know, like you're trying to help them out, trying to make it easier. You're going out and actually laying eyes on the job, laying eyes on the material. Or, you know, if it's tight numbers, you're out there helping out. And that's really refreshing and cool to see. Well, I do want to share one quick story before we, 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 we cut out just because it's funny. So when I was working for the plumbing company, you know, some of the different things I've had to do was, you know, I was, I was helping implement a new um, dispatching system because everybody was on their little cricket phones before. And we were moving the smartphones and doing a lot of the work from, from, from a phone and, uh, you know, closing calls out, whatever. Well, sure. they tricked me <laughs> because they needed an extra guy to help do a sewer reroute, which was, you know, digging the line. <laughs> and, and and you know this was like march or april in florida which you know march or april anywhere else is not bad but it was hot here you know and you know i'm a soft soft sales guy right um and i was a soft office guy at that point um but they had us doing the sewer reroute under a pine tree so there's roots everywhere and i'm oh. dying just digging away digging away and i'd already made the decision i was like i can't quit this because if i quit they'll never let me live it down but if i fall over from exhaustion and I, I'm kind of a legend with these guys, but if I quit, they will always, always give me hell for that. And I'm never, ever, ever going to live it down. So it's, that's the thing. It's, you know, being willing to, you know, to, to jump in and help and get my hands dirty that, you know, because, you know, you guys are doing it. I'm not any better than you are. I put my pants on the same way. Um, you know, a hell of a lot more than I do, but, you know, it's, you know, we, we, we again, we're just, we're on the same team. We have to be able to willing to help each other out. That's cool, man. That's hey, cool. Man. All right, guys. Well, that's it for tonight. Um, we'll definitely reach out to you again, David. And uh, I just want to say thanks again for coming on. Um, Thank you for having me. If you guys want to connect with him, just look him up on LinkedIn. I will tag his LinkedIn account. Um, and then if you guys want to link up with him and talk to him anymore, you can find him on there for sure. Yeah, and, and please feel free to reach out to me to ask me any questions. I'm happy to share what knowledge knowledge I have. 
um, with, you know, helping you guys build your business, build your brand. You know, it's not, um, I, I, it's not really anything fancy. It's just being honest, just talking to people and communicating, but you know, um, you know, I, I, I'm here to help in any capacity. All right. Well, have a good night guys. Thanks a lot. See ya.